a few of you have asked to see the internals of that uh, ECH-42 or 6CU-7 tube out of my old Pi radio, the one that broke. Well, here's a look inside it. The ECH-42, or also known as a 6CU-7, is a rimlock tube. It's what's referred to as a frequency converter, a triode hexode. It has a single cathode, as you can see, marked K slash or S, uh, and it has two plates. One is a triode with just a single grid, and that grid is also connected as the control grid on the hexode side, which has got four grids, as you can see, and a plate. So when we open this thing up, we should see two discrete or two separate plates and a bunch of grids inside. So let's uh, take this thing apart. So this is the uh, ECH42 tube that came out of my Pi radio. And I thought it might be kind of neat to look at what's inside this thing. See the makeup of one of these tubes. Now I was, I was going to get uh, Big Clive's x-ray machine, but I thought that might be a little bit of overkill because we might kind of do some damage to the internal structure. So I think my old snips here will probably be more than adequate to remove the base from this, this tube here. There we go. That's got the base off of this. So now we can take a look at the internal structures of this tube because I've never opened one of these up before. And it looks like the, the pins here that broke, if you look, uh, on this thing. I'm just going to get this broken glass out of the way so I don't uh, slice my fingers with it. Okay, it looks like one of the, uh, the the pins here is actually going to one of the filaments. As you can see here, the, actual, the two pins that actually broke actually went to the filament. So if I give these things a tug, that filament will actually come right out of that cathode. As you can see, there's the filament wire. There's the other one. It broke. There's the filament. We can have some fun with this. We can put some voltage through this thing and we'll light it up. We'll light it up like an incandescent bulb exposed to the atmosphere and watch it burn, baby, burn. Well, that's not... We need more voltage than that. That's kind of lame. Let's make this thing get bright. There we go. I popped it at 17, 18 volts. 18 volts it took to pop that thing. Bet you the other one will pop quicker though. It's a little shorter. This one should pop a little quicker. Yep, it did. Okay, enough of that horsing around. But here's the, here's the part that's interesting the structure of the actual tube itself. So it's got a screen here, this is the, the plate, but unlike some, it's, it's, a, it's a mesh type plate. And here's the getter on the top here that they would flash to keep any of the oxygen out. It would keep the, the, the tube itself under vacuum. Uh, we're gonna open this plate up and just see what is underneath this plate. So I'll get out my super sharp snips and we'll just, uh, Open it up. So there's what's underneath the the screen, the main the main plate. There's actually another set of plates underneath here. And it looks like there's two different grids on this thing. We'll take this other screen out of the way.
so we can dissect this tube. I'm just going to cut the the top off of it here. That's actually pretty strong metal. It looks like there's a, a filament across the top here too. Check this out. There is. There's a filament across the top. At least that looks like it's a piece of filament. It may have come up. It may have gone down through the hole in the middle of the cathode. We'll remove the top insulator here. And this here is the indirectly heated cathode. The filament itself actually goes through this little tube. It's just a metal tube. This is your cathode. As I continue to remove the mica insulator here. There's the grid, one of the grids. There's two more grids inside here, it looks like. We'll move these plates out of the way. There are two more grids inside. You can see them there. So the cathode was down in the middle here. And then there's one grid along the outside. And there's another grid in the middle. grids inside here. So there's the first grid. That's, just, that's the second grid. This is the first grid here. So this grid is right around the cathode. And there was a second grid here. And then there was a third grid. There's the third grid. And the fourth grid, the remnants of the fourth grid is down here. So this, this tube had, had a single cathode, it had your main control grid, three additional grids, and uh, 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 two, basically two plates. It had a, a one plate that wrapped around the grids, but then it had this screen that was around there. Interesting. Of course, I could have just probably done that and pulled it apart. I didn't know if it was a welder or not, but it looks like it wasn't. It looks like it was just, it was just press fit together when they built this thing. These would have been handmade, you know, back in the, uh, I, I, would, I guess probably late 50s or early 60s when this tube would have been made, but these would have all been put together by hand by people working in tube factories. Interesting. Anyway, I thought you guys might like to take a look at what the inside of this tube was. It was a, an ECH42, which is the same as a 6CU7. Look at that original box. You can just, you can just tell this is, the, of course, the original or the replacement tube. I don't know if there's any date coding on here. International Service Master, they just sold tubes, right? So, boxed them up and sold them. I remember these quite well from, you know, my days of servicing when tubes were still pretty common. Anyway, that's the uh, look at the inside of this old tube that's FUBAR. Thanks for watching.